Shalom Chavri, my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live tonight, a production of the Denon Institute of Biblical Research. And friends, I really, I'm, I'm really pleading with you, bear with me tonight, because I know we have many people that watch the broadcast not interested in religious sides of stories or anything like that. We have Arabic friends that watch. We have Jewish friends that are watching uh, all over the world, including that in Israel. We have Christian friends that are watching as well by the tens of thousands. And, I, and then we just have people that are, they don't take a stand on religion or anything. Uh, we've, we've had all kinds of friends. We've had Hindu uh, people from India. A lot of people from India watch as well. China. Uh, so, you know, I just want to uh, just invite you to really listen, listen into what we're doing here tonight. It's a very important broadcast. We're looking into prophetic events that I believe that are coming upon the earth. And oddly enough, yes, I'm starting in 1 John chapter 4, speaks about the Antichrist in here, but I really want to focus on that spirit of Christ, that spirit of Christ, that, should, that you know, of the confessing that Christ is in the flesh. Let's read into this real quick, and then we're going to really go deep into what we're looking at here. So this is not, it's not a, a skim milk message. This is very serious, what we're going to get into. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is, is it in the world. Now, we're going to continue to read on in just a moment, but I need to really back up and let's focus on something here. We see, you know, every spirit, you know, hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now, it can't really mean what you think it does from just you know, <laughs> a literal sense. And the reason I say that is because when Jesus came and he was casting out the demons that were in people, they would even say, like in the case of the maniac of Gadaria, have you come to torment us before our time, thou son of God? They confessed that he was God in flesh. And it was the, notice, it, it's not just, you can't think about this in the Greek sense here. It is Yeshua HaMashiach. It is the anointed salvation has come in flesh. All right? And they recognize that, that he was in flesh, but it's deeper than that, and you're going to find that out in just a moment. And it's important to know this because this is how you're going to overcome in this very hideous age that is coming. All right? Now, I know I may get a little excited tonight. I know some people, they say, Steve, please don't shout and scream. You hurt my ears. And then I get soft and you're turning the volume up and down. Forgive me. You have to understand this is very important to me. And, and I don't know how to control that. All right. I, I'm just, I'm passionate about what I got to say. And I know some love it, but there are some that you're trying to see what I'm saying and you want to understand. And I appreciate that. And I don't want to drive you away because of being loud, but you have to keep in mind too, I am hard of hearing. I hardly hear out of one ear at all. So and sometimes I may sound loud and I don't even know I sound loud because, or as loud as I may get, I should say, because the fact I don't, I barely hear it all out of one of my ears there. That's out of my right ear is the ear that I don't hear, hear from. Anyway, so he goes on here and he says, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is it in the world. All right. Now, really what John is trying to show you is there's two types of spirits on the earth. An antichrist spirit, which we know there is an antichrist, a final uh, demonic being, which to me is also the Melchizedek, the hidden king of the north, who is over that Roman Empire, the Babylonian, the revived Babylonian kingdom. And I really believe, you know, I used to like, think a lot of times this was you know, one of the popes it would be because, you know, th th there's, you'll find out in a minute about that as well. But it's deeper than that. 
The Pope is only a spokesman for that Antichrist spirit that's in the world today. And friends, I know we got a lot of Catholics that listen. And listen, I love you guys. I really do. Because God says in his word, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. That's in Revelation 18.4. That tells me there's some genuine children of God that are inside the Catholic system, and they're not bad people. So friends, never look down on Catholics just because they're Catholic. God's got some godly people there, and I realize that. And we got to know if God says, come out of her, my people, he's got some of his people there, all right? And that's not just in the book of Revelation. I forget where it is, but it's also written in the Tanakh as well about coming out of her. But he's also speaking to Israel because Israel got all tangled up in with Rome once again in this day, which is very dangerous because uh, the Pope's talking about baptizing aliens. Well, maybe he's met these guys, you know? I, I have met two people that I know personally that claim they have met these demonic beings. Okay, so anyway, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is what? In you, than he that is in the world. Now that's the key right there. He is in you. So when you're looking at this, hereby you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that what? The anointed salvation is come in the flesh is of God. And he being in you, when you can confess that the Spirit of God is in you, that's one thing that that Antichrist spirit will never do. He will never confess that God is in you as well, that Christ is living inside of you. And yet this is the very thing that Christ come to do. All right? He came, he gave his life, the Spirit that was within him came out of him and came back upon the believer. And interestingly enough, they also deny, the Antichrist denies that there's any possibility of the Jews ever having that spirit of Christ living in them. So this is what John is saying, hereby know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. So when you can recognize that Jesus Christ has come in your flesh, if you have believed him and if you have received the spirit of God within you, and that is of God. And that also includes the fact that Yeshua himself did walk the face of the earth. But as I pointed out, we can't just say it's that alone because the devils believe and tremble and the devils were confessing that he was the son of God manifested in the flesh. All right, so that's how we have to look. We have to look deeper. They are of, excuse me, we go on further with this. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, and he knoweth, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Again, what is, what is he showing you? It's the Spirit of God, it is Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Notice what he says, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. I mean, John is clearly showing you that he's talking about he that believes that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He's talking about them as the believers. This is what he's talking about. It's Christ has come in you. That's the flesh. This is the flesh, the temple of God that he comes into. Now, you got to catch this, friends, because see, this is what Satan is wanting to mimic. All right? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is, is born of God, and, uh, excuse me, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth, knoweth, loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifest, the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through him. So there it is again. That's how you know when he that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, he's talking about in your flesh. All right? That's what truly being filled with the Holy Spirit is. Because I'll tell you something, friends. This is what Christ had to come. This is how he corrected the mistake that happened in the beginning. He had to come down here to make, to bring together, to make that seed alive, that seed that was within us. Because yes, we're walking around here on the earth and, and we're dying and we're going into the grave, but there's no resurrection. Why? Because the, 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 German, the seed has not been germinated. And in order for the seed to come to life again, it must be germinated. This is why when his life, when, when he poured out his blood upon this earth and his spirit that came out of him, 
See? That's what gave that germination to the seed of life, to the souls that ever had been on the earth and those that would come even afterwards when they believe. And God comes down and confirms your faith in Him and gives you the Holy Spirit. That's true salvation. And my Jewish friends, let me tell you something. I don't fault what happened 2,000 years ago. My mother's family was there. My father's family were dispersed with the house of Israel. But my mother's family was there. And yeah, they condemned our Savior to death. But you know what? It was prophesied to be this way. God, we, it, it took Israel. You have to understand, the Levites were the priestly nation that offered sacrifice unto God. And so therefore, Christ had to come and they had to be the ones to do the dirty work. So don't look down on them. He had to blind their eyes in order for them to recognize, or for them to offer him up, because had they recognized him, they wouldn't have crucified him. And if he hadn't have been handed over to the Romans to be crucified, then there'd be no life for us. There'd be no salvation. So they did the greatest thing that they could do. This is why Paul talks about them over in Romans chapter 11. Their enemy for, uh, you know, their enemy for your sake, or, you know, they're, they're beloved to the Father for His sake, but their enemies to you. Why? Because they still don't recognize, they're still blind, but their eyes will come open. All right? Now, let's move on, though. This is going to get really, really odd, friends, but we're going to go into this. Now, this is where we're, it's going to get very interesting. Uh, we are going into Isaiah 26. Now, this is a very interesting uh, prophecy. Let me see if I, I hope I put things in the right order here. Let's see here. Th uh, thy dead shall live, my dead body shall arise. Awake and sing, O ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as of the light, and the earth shall bring to life the shades, as they call it. But it's literally speaking of the Raphaim. I have it. Put it over here in blue, highlighted. The Aretz Raphaim Tapil. All right, now they translate this uh, to bring to life. I don't know if that's really the best way to translate Tapil, but Tapil, it's not Nafal. It doesn't come from the word fall down as some translations make it. It's Tapil. Pil is the actual root of the word here, and it is clearly showing that the giants come back upon the earth. Now watch what he says. Come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. You know, those of you that believe in a rapture, there's your rapture scripture right there. Come my people. Lecha ami bo bechadecha. All right, Chedeh is your room, your closet. All right, so he says, to, he says to his people, come my people, see, my, you know, here's come right here, come my people here, to you, come my people, into your, into your bedroom, into your room, all right, and sugor delatecha, close your door. This is, I mean, you're talking about a rapture message right here. Now, but here's the difference, though. I mean, because people ask me, Stephen, you believe in rapture? Some people, you know, I, I don't necessarily believe the rapture the way some people believe the rapture. I know we have pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, all kinds of tribs and everything. I've always been for whenever he's ready to come, let him come. All right? I don't like to limit God in the way he wants to do it. If he wants to come earlier, I'm all for it. Okay? But... When we look at what's going on here in the scripture, as we continue on, for the Lord, for behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place to visit upon the inhabitants of the earth their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. When we're looking at what's happening here, let me back up just a little bit here. Lord, in trouble have they sought thee. Silently they poured out a prayer when, they, when thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with a child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out of her pains, so have we been at thy presence, O Lord. We have been with a child. We have been in pain. We have, 
we have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the land. Neither are the inhabitants of the world come to life. All right? Then he goes on to say, Thy dead shall live. My dead bodies shall arise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of light, and the earth shall bring to life the Raphaim. All right? He's bringing forth judgment is what's coming. And he says, Come my people, those of you that are filled with the Holy Spirit, and enter into your chambers and shut the doors about thee and hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. This is an Old Testament prophecy of a rapture. But what are we being hidden from? The Raphaim? You know, if you think about it, friends, for a moment, think about the story of Noah. Now, God said he would never destroy the world with water again. But what happened before that destruction came on the earth? The giants, they were all killing one another. The giants had overtaken the earth at that time. And we, haven't, we weren't rid of the giants even after the flood. All right? We called them Nephilim. And we're going to go into more of this here in just a moment here. But my point is, is that there was major wars on the earth. They had taught, even according to the book of Enoch, how to make the weapons of war. And they warred against one another and they were devouring men's flesh. And even the, the poor sons of God that were being killed in all of this, their cry was going up unto God. But what did God do? Noah was found righteous in all his generation and he made a way, he prepared a way, he put him inside the ark with these animals and what did he do? Close the door. Alright? So what does God say to you? Enter into the ark and close, or enter into your, your, your room and close the door. He's going to hide you at the time of this type of wrath. Now, let me just, let's jump over to the book of Numbers. Something else I want to share with you. This is just showing you that even after the flood, we're still dealing with these Nephilim, these giants that were still in the earth here. Remember when, and, and the story, there's much deeper than this here. And Caleb stilled the people toward Moses and said, we should go out up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. All right? But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they, see, Numbers chapter 13, verse 31, for they are stronger than we. And they spread an evil report of the land which they had spied out unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have passed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come out of the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were, were we were in their sight. Giants. You know, now I know some people, you write out there, you know, well, the angels, they couldn't, you know, you, you look at the scripture and you see where it says that, you know, Jesus says that the angels of heaven are not like, you know, they're not made to have uh, they're not, neither married nor given in marriage, is what it says. When we see these fallen ones, they, the scripture says they had the ability to transform themselves. In another apocrypha, they transform themselves into what? To appear as their husbands. And they committed this great sin. Now we're going to get into this in Genesis as well. We're going to go into that. But let me, let me back up to something because it's really important. Again, I have it highlighted in blue right here. All right. The Eres Ocherta Yashaviah. All right. What is this? The, the, the inhabitants of the land. This is the inhabitants right here. It's, I can't read it literally for you because it just wouldn't make sense to you. They are literally eating they're eating the people, Ocherta, the inhabitants of that land. They were literally physically eating the people. 
Now, do you remember the words of Jesus? Let's jump over to that real quick here. Matthew 24, But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also in the coming of the Son of Man be. I mean, why don't people believe Jesus? Uh, that really gets me. He tells you in Matthew 24 all about the wars, the rumors of wars, the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, the earthquakes in diverse places. And he says, these are the beginning of sorrows. And then he finally comes down to this part. He says, but as, it, what, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now remember, the days of Noah was also a rapture of some sorts there. A deliverance of a family from the wrath of God. For as in the days that, uh, that were before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Do you know the word eating there in Greek is like a gnawing on the bones? It's not just a typical eating. It's like a crunching type of eating there. Okay, and as we find out from the book of Enoch, they did devour all the toil of the man and when the man they couldn't keep up with what they needed to eat when it come to the vegetation of the earth then they begin to eat the human beings that's the book of Enoch now, I know a lot of people don't well, you know it's not in the King James Version Bible okay we well, use it as a history book you read your history books don't you sure you do I mean you send the kids to school they come home and you study history you believe that George Washington was the first president of the United States but you really have no proof of that, do you? You can only go by the book that you have written. Oh, we got a grave tomb over there. So, they dug up giant bones as well. What makes that any different? Oh, we have pictures, paintings. I got a brother that sent me, and I'd love to talk to this brother too, sent me from Australia, says, in the caves they have depictions, drawings in there of giants. You see what my point is? I mean, we have historical evidence. We have archaeological evidence. We have things like that, all right? And it's the same way that we go by the history of the United States. But who's to know what's been altered even in our own history to bring forth an agenda? Think about it like that. All right, so in this case here, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be, be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now Jesus is clearly showing you that it's going to repeat. Who were the ones that were eating and drinking? It was the giants. And they were eating and drinking human blood. All right, now let's go back to Isaiah 26. And when this is just in the time of Joshua, when they came into the promised land and they found that, and uh, verse 19, thy dead shall live. Wait a minute, my body shall arise, sing dust to thy dew as the dew of the light. Wait a minute, whoop, sorry, wrong one. My apology. Numbers chapter 13. And they that spread the evil report of the land which they had spied out. And the children of Israel saying, the land through which we had passed to spy it out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And that's a literal statement. Now, it wasn't that when it says here that they brought an evil report, it's not to say that their facts were wrong. They were sending the terror into the people to cause them to doubt that they could overcome them. All right? That's what it was but they eat the people thereof. And Jesus is saying over here in Matthew 24 that in the days when the Son of Man comes, it's going to happen again. Interesting, isn't it? Now let's back up to Genesis chapter 6. All right? And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them, took them wives whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever for he that also is flesh therefore shall his days be numbered, excuse me, be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, they bore children to them. The same were of mighty men that were of old the men of renown. The 
these sons of God are fallen sons of God. And the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination and thought of his heart was only evil continually. You understand now? And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart because of this inbreeding that was never supposed to happen. Jesus says they did what? They were marrying and given in marriage. That, even in the Greek, is not a willful marriage. Just like it says in Genesis, they took whomever they so desired. All right, and I'm just paraphrasing that, but backing up. And he said here, and they took them wives whomsoever they chose. But the woman didn't have a choice in the matter. That's what Jesus says right here too if you look at the Greek. It's not a choosing of their own. Now, moving on, Leviticus 18. We have to ask ourselves the question too about these giants and how they actually got here. Because clearly, written in the scripture, we see the evidence of the giants that they are here. We see them as we just showed you in the book of Numbers where the children of Israel were dealing with them under Joshua's time. We know all the different biblical uh, events that happen. And by the way, it doesn't end with, uh, with Joshua. Moses fought the giants. Joshua fought the giants. Moses writes that the children of Lot, or Lot's descendants also fought the giants, that Esau's descendants fought the giants. It's also written in the Bible that uh, David and Saul were fighting the giants as well. So these giants were around for a long, long time back then. All right? Now, here's what gets interesting. Leviticus 18. How do they get here? All right? And thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is impure by her uncleanliness. And thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. These are all fornications that he's talking about, right? And thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now, let me make something clear. When he's talking about giving your seed and set them apart to Molech, he's not talking about putting them on an altar and setting your kids on fire. Everything before and everything after is a sexual sin. What makes you think that verse 21 is any different? All right, now, show you some things, and some of this you've already known, but I'm going to bring some new ones out to you as well. In Deuteronomy, uh, gosh, I forget which chapter this is. In Deuter oh, it's Deuteronomy 18. Let's start here with verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. What are their abominations? Their filthiness. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth divination or a soothsayer or an enchanter or a sorcerer or a charmer, a one that consulteth a ghost <laughs> or a familiar spirit or a necromancer. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination of the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. Who were the ones we're driving out? It was all Raphaim, Anakim, all the giants. All right? How did they do this? They passed through the fire. Also in 2 Kings, it speaks of the same thing. But again, it's speaking about Molech, passing through the fire to Molech. So they're going through a veil, a spiritual adultery that actually produced giants and brought giants in the land. Oh my gosh. Now, this is something that's very interesting because in Proverbs, in chapter 2 is 1, I think it's also in chapter 9 as well, we read this, but we don't know what it's really saying. And so we miss a lot of what Solomon was warning about. But the sad thing is, is Solomon ended up going to strange flesh as well later in his life. 
Watch what he re writes here, though. My son, if thou will receive my words and lay up my commandments with you, so that you make your ear to attend unto wisdom, that, that your heart incline to discernment, yea, if thou shalt call, call, call for understanding and lift up thy voice for discernment, if you will seek her as silver, search for her as a hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, and cometh knowledge and, and discernment. He layeth up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to them that walk in integrity. That he may guard the paths of his justice and preserve the way of his godly ones. Then shall you understand righteousness and justice and equity, yea, every good path. For wisdom shall enter into thy heart, and knowledge shall be pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall watch over thee, discernment shall guard thee, to deliver thee from the way of evil, from the men that speak froward things, who leave the paths of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of evil, who are crooked in their ways and perverse in their paths, to deliver you from the strange woman, even from the alien woman that maketh smooth her words." Now, a lot of times people read this, and you're going to find out this in a second. They read it and they think, you know, it's just to keep them going down to the prostitute's house. It's a completely different type of prostitution beyond anything you can imagine. That forsake the Lord of her youth and forget it, the covenant of her God. This is what she's doing here. Remember what, what we just read just a moment ago over in Deuteronomy? Don't let your seed pass over into Molech. Don't, let, you know, don't do any of the things that they were doing in the land. But they did it anyway. For her house sinketh down unto death, and her paths unto the Raphaim. They translate the word shades. None that go unto her, neither do they attain unto the paths of life. That thou mayest walk in the way of good men and keep the paths of righteousness. Now, here's what it is. If you go back to John, and we look at what John, when it says here, Hereby know you the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ the anointed Savior, salvation is come in the flesh, is of God. This is the way that God intended for it to be. Not the way they were doing back in the times of, of uh, the, when, before the children of Israel came and took in the land of Israel. Satan was there trying to mimic God's plan from the very beginning. Remember what he said? He would be like the Most High, exalt his throne above God, would be worshipped if he was God in the temple of God. We were to wait for the coming of Christ. But those demonic beings, angels that did not keep their first estate, remember that scripture? They came down. They bore children with the women of the earth. And even after the flood, after the destruction of their children, the Nephilim that were on the earth, they began once again trying to find a way back because we know according to the book of Enoch that they were imprisoned, and I believe it's in Antarctica where they were imprisoned at, as it's clearly described in the book of Enoch. And of course, they would be involved in the affairs of man, causing him to sacrifice to gods as if, or to devils as if they were sacrificing to God. And what were they doing then? What, what God warned, he warned the children of Israel, don't do like they did. They were mixing the seed, bringing forth giants, Rephaim. That's how that happened in the land during the times when, when Joshua came in and was driving out the inhabitants. It wasn't that God was a cruel God when he said, go kill the women and the children and, and don't let any of them survive. He was dealing with a demonic race that had came into the earth. That's what he was dealing with. 
And he was warning the children of Israel, don't get involved in that. But some of them did anyway. We see that in the book of Ezra. The children of Elam, who is, a, is one of the sons of, uh, uh, of Shem. Remember what they came up? They had married amongst the strange women. Jeez. All the mess-ups have been going on. Why? You know how this happens? Because you don't know Christ. Now let me say this to my Jewish brothers and sisters. You're dealing with the same thing today. We are dealing with a resurgent of these giants in the land that will come. Why? Because instead of going on to know Christ, the Antichrist spirit has evolved in this age here. And there is coming a wrath upon this earth, just like it was before the flood. And it's going to be wars, and the wars are just the beginning of sorrows. No wonder why he says, enter into thy closet while I, and shut the door while he deals with the ungodly on this earth. In other words, they're going to devour and kill each other. Okay? Now, let me figure out where we left off here. We were in Proverbs here, right? So her room, she goes down. None that go into her return, neither do they attain into the paths of life. Why? You know why they don't attain to the paths of life? Because she's what? With the Raphaim. See? For her house sinketh down to the death, and her paths into the shades, unto the Raphaim. So you, you cannot attain to the path of life. Why? Because it's not the Holy Spirit that is coming within. Now it's bringing in a demonic spirit from that nether world. It is happening what we read over here in Leviticus 18. Now I hope I'm not losing people when I'm saying this. And thou shalt not give any of thy seed to, the, to them that apart to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not lie, uh, let, me, let me back up, that's not the one I wanted, Deuteronomy I think is where it is. There shall not be found among you any of them that maketh the son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth a divination, a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer. You know what, I think, it, let me bring it over here to Kings, because if I'm not mistaken, it's in the first book of Kings, um, and I think it's also, oh gosh, I don't remember. Let's try 17. Nope, that's Elijah. 16. I forget where it's at. Passing through the fire to Moloch. I, I'm, 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 ooh, jeez. I don't remember now, friends. I just, well, you, I've, I've said it to you guys before, so you're aware of it, where they pass through the fire to Moloch. This is what's happening. It's also written in Proverbs chapter 9 as well. Let me see if I can, if I've got that one handy. Oh, uh, gosh, I don't, see, yeah, let's see. No, I don't see it on my notes. But also Proverbs chapter 9, again, uh, when it's speaking about this bad woman, it's not so much, it, it's, the thing is, it's demonic is what's going on. All right, now, moving on, Genesis 14. This is something I really want you to be able to see here, so let's go through this. And it came to pass in the days of uh, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elassar, Hedor, uh, excuse me, Hedor Laomer, king of Elam, now, Elam was up in what we call modern-day Iran. And he was the king of Elam. And even though Elam are the descendants of Shem, which was part of Israel at one time, their king was not a godly king. And Tibal, king of the Goim, they that made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shenab, king of Adama, and Shemeber, king of the Zeboim, and the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. All these came as allies into the Val of Sidom, or the Valley of Sidom, the same as the Salt Sea. Twelve years they serve Chedor uh, Laomer. And in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year came Chedor Laomer, and the kings that were with him, and smote the Raphaim in Ashtaroth and Kanim and the Zuzim uh, in Ham, and the Amim in Shaveh Karathim. He come down defeating the giants as well. And he must have been a pretty bad old guy to be able to come down there and take these giants on. And he's not a godly guy either. All right? Now, I'm bringing this out for a reason. Keep in mind, as I say this, before the deliverance of Noah and his family, there was a major war going on. 
It's promised that a major war will happen in this day too before our deliverance. All right. And the Horites and their Mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they turned back and came to Emeshvat, the same as Kadesh, and smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites that dwelt in Hazon Tamar. And there went out of the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adama and the king of Zeboim and the king of Bela and the Zoar, and they sat in the battle in array against them in the valley of Sodom. Now, to make the story short, they overthrow the Sodom, Sodomite kingdoms there. Lot is taken captive. All right. Now, as Lot is taken captive by this king of Elam, Chedel Loamah, he's taken captive. Then Abraham, this man's got four, he's got four kings with him that came down there and defeated this, fighting giants and everything. Abraham gets his sons and his servants and he goes down to deliver Lot. There is a battle against good and evil on the earth. And also notice there is a battle against the giants on the earth. But Abraham delivers his servant Lot out of the hand of this evil king from Elam, from Iran. And what's interesting is right after this all happens, what do we have in verse 18? And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of God, the Most High. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram, God of the Most High, maker of heaven and earth. And blessed be the God of the Most High, who hath delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the God of the Most High, maker of heaven and earth, that I may not take a thread nor a, a shoe latchet, nor ought out of this thine less uh, thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich, save only which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Ishkal, and Mamre, let them take their portion. But isn't it interesting? Right after this battle, there's a battle, a war with the giants. And right after that happens, in this Sodomite kingdom, Abraham delivers Lot, the backslider that needed to be delivered, was rescued. And then Melchizedek, a type of Christ, comes on the scene. Isn't it interesting how the prophecies just lay there? Jeremiah chapter 49. Now, I won't go into that one because that's, that's very lengthy right there. But the whole purpose that I wanted to share with you today, we need to be truly having the Spirit of Christ within us. We may be facing some very serious issues in the future if these things are really true. If the words of Jesus mean what they say they mean as it was before the, in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. He was just being brief. They were eating human flesh and drinking human blood until he entered into that ark. They were still birthing these giants until they entered into the ark. And now we're finding out about all kinds of evils. Are the reports true about these giants that were killed? One in Afghanistan, I forget where the other one was. There's a good possibility. I mean, if the Bible is true, that these days are going to repeat, and if it's really true over here in Isaiah 13, if we read it from the Septuagint, you know, I've commanded and I bring them, giants are coming to fulfill my wrath. Now, it seems to appear when we read from the Septuagint, it's a heavenly host that is coming. But the point is, Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And the only difference that you will know between an Antichrist spirit and the Spirit of God, because see, what did Satan say? Satan said he wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted to be worshipped as if he were God. 
sitting in the temple of God. You know what? I need to find that scripture. Let me pull that up real quick because uh, All right, here, here we go. This is where we want to pick it up just to share with you this last part here. How art thou fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground that didst cast lots over the nations? And thou saidest in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven above the stars of God, will I exalt my throne? And I will sit upon the mount of meeting in the uttermost part of the north, Siphon. The king of the north. If he sits in the uttermost part of the north and he exalts his throne, then he is the king of the north. He is the Melakatsenfon. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to the netherworld, to the uttermost parts of the pit. Now, but let me back up for this just for a moment there. And I will exalt my throne. I will sit upon the mount of meeting in the uttermost part of the north. He actually envelops himself in darkness, the human body. He wants to be like the Most High. He wants to be worshipped as if he were God sitting in the temple of God. See? Now, let me, let me, let's see, let's pull this up in the King James Version Bible there. Let me see if it's worded the same. I know there's a little different wording in this, so let's just go there real quick. Isaiah 14. Drop down here to about verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which just weaken the nations? How did he weaken the nations? Crossbreeding that seed. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. There it is. That's where it talks about being enveloped in the darkness in the Hebrew language in verse 14. The heights above the clouds. I'll be like the Most High. And I believe there is another scripture where he talks about being worshipped as if he were God. He is fully bent on creating his own super race. He wants to live inside of our bodies. This is what the transhumanism is all about. This is why he that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, in your flesh, that is the Spirit of God. Because the ones that do not have that, see, they want it to be fulfilling what Satan's desire is, that, he's come in, that Satan has come in their flesh. He is the king of the north, and he is controlling those leaders. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. Consider helping us in the endeavor that we're trying to do here to bring the truth to the world. We need your support. You can visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there, or even if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, if you just Go back to the very channel you're watching, Israeli News Live on YouTube there. Uh, right on our main page, let me just pull it up so you can act, guys can actually see that. Um, we have a little place there that you can donate as well. And it's right over here. Donate, thank you. And, uh, and the picture itself on the screen just above the subscribe button there. You can click there and you can donate and help be a part of the work we're doing here. We thank you. We love you. God bless you. Uh, you can also, if you prefer to, uh, to send a donation, you can also do so. That's on the bottom of your screen here at the end of the video, which is 8297 Champions Gate, uh, uh, Champions Gate Boulevard, number 442. And that's Champions Gate, Florida, 33, uh, I think it's 896 is the zip code. God bless, excuse me, God bless you and thank you for watching.